Hello, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. Now we are here again with another topic as the Lord has inspired. Continuation. Who are the body of Christ? Who is Jerusalem? Who is the Antichrist? What is the tribulation about? Who are those that will be raptured? Please sit tight and enjoy this teaching. And I know that the Holy Spirit Almighty will enlighten each one of us in the name of Jesus. Hello, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. How are you? Has been your day? I'm sure you've had a very wonderful day. Let us pray. Father, Lord, King of kings, Lord of lords, I thank you. I give you glory, give you honor, give you adoration. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time in your presence. Holy Spirit, less of me, more of you. Please teach us your word. And Father, please give us the grace not just to be listeners, but to practicalize what we hear. And me, Lord, my Father, let this word not be used against me on the day of judgment. Holy Spirit, please take over my mouthpiece. Let it be what you want us to hear and not what I want to say. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, I've prayed. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. It's good to see you again. I'm so excited to be back. And for people that have been connecting, don't forget to subscribe, obviously. Make sure you subscribe, you like, you share and the video. For people that you've been watching, you've been listening, you know, to to what the Lord has for us. You know, the way God works is quite interesting. You see, this topic is as a result of a topic. And then now the Holy Spirit said, continue with it because we are really in the end time and something is about to happen. As I said it, that the Holy Spirit told me that recently that something is about to happen. So we're going to be looking at the book of Revelation. You know, we're going to be looking at the book of Revelation to um, to study as the Holy Spirit has inspired. So by God's grace, uh, last week, if you've not been following, please, I would advise you so that you're able to understand where we, where we stopped. Last week, we were able to talk about the Antichrist and the mark of 666. So please watch the, the previous video. I will try and put the link below the description button. So uh, today, we're going to be looking at the silence in heaven. You know, we, we read what happened in the book of Revelation chapter 8 from verse 1 to 2. There was silence in heaven. What happened? Why was there silence in heaven? So it's going to be like, you know, because this is a topic that you don't rush. Otherwise, you will not understand. And this is a book that I, as children of God, we, we tend to like run away from. But if you, if you ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, it's going to teach you like, very simply, A, B, C, and you will, will, will all be blessed in the name of God. That's the reason why this topic is here, to help us, to edify us, for us to grow, and to make us to be at our last. So you're not tossed up and down. You know, you're not tossed like, oh, this is what happened. But you already know you've heard it from the, the, the mouth of the Lord. So we're going to continue from Revelation chapter 8, from verse 1 to 2. So I will implore you to watch the videos step by step. So you are able to, and then if you have any question, just send me an email. I'll put the email address at the description uh, button. And when he had opened the, the description link rather, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets. That's where we stopped last week. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden Caesar that was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. If you're a child of God, whenever you pray, he goes up to God as an incense. That's one thing you must understand. So, and before the Lord, there is an incense that's a golden altar that takes the prayers of the saints up. So whenever you pray, don't think that God has no answer. He's actually, he's, be, he's going to be returned to you in the form of a testimony. Because in verse 4, the Bible says, And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, the smoke that came up from the incense and the prayers of the saints, joined together, ascended before God, out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the Caesar and filled with the fire of the altar. So the prayers of the of the saint was mixed up with the prayers of the of, with the fire from the altar. So it's very very important as children of God, you must be on fire. But that's not the topic now. And cast it into the earth. So I want us to understand this this particular illustration. The prayers the, the saints prayed. When they prayed, he went to the heavens. It was in the hand of the angel. Then the angel now mixed it with the fire from the altar of Jehovah. 
mix it together and sent it back to earth. So when it was sent back to earth, what happened? And the angel took the Caesar and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it onto the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which are the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. So we need to understand this, my brother, my sisters. It was the prayers of the saints that triggered the trumpet sound. It was the prayers of the saints that triggered the trumpet that the angels prepared to, 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 to sound the trumpet. Now, as the pr prayers of the saints went up, they mixed it with fire, the fire from the altar of God, and sent it back to, heaven, to earth. And because of that, there were certain things that was taking place on earth. Now, let's go to Revelation. Let's go to uh, Revelation. Let's go to Revelation chapter 7. Re Re Revelation chapter 6. What was the prayers of the saints? What were they praying about? Look at what they said here. Let's go to Revelation chapter 5. Chapter 5 from verse 8. Revelation chapter 5 verse 8 says, And when you are taking the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them apps and golden veil full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals therefore. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. My brother, my sister, whenever we pray, the Lord answers, the Lord moves. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous are very much. Now, what was, the, what was the prayer request of the saints, as Elias said? This was the prayer request of the saints. The prayer, the, the saints, they were asking in the book of Revelation chapter 6, from verse 9. Look at the prayers of the saints. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they heard. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood that dwell on the earth? And white ropes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants and also their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. So this was the prayers of the saints. When are you going to avenge our blood? When are you going to avenge our blood? And then they were given white robes. And they said, there are still some saints that need to fuel everybody. They need to fuel the body. Until when that happens, before the blood can be avenged. Now let's now go to verse, uh, verse uh, 17. Verse 17. And I beheld, look, at that was their prayers, is it not? Then the next verse says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black, as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casted her untimely figs, when she shaken out of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondsman and every free man hid themselves in the den and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of the Lord is come, and who shall be able to stand it? Remember the Bible passage we just read. The angels poured the prayers of the saints back to earth, and there were voices. It was the voices of people on the surface of the earth. There was earthquake, there was lightning, there was thunderings. So when the Lord decided to avenge, huh, who can stand it? So for people that were left behind on the earth, when the prayers, because they persecuted a lot of Christians, so the, some, some Christians were now shouting in heaven that, Lord, when are you going to avenge us? They gave them a white rope. The, but there were still some Christians left on the earth. They were left on the earth. So it was the cries of those prayers of the people on the, in the heavens and the cries of the, the persecuted uh, saints that made, the, made a reaction in heaven. And then the moment that prayers were sent back, there was chaos on the earth. 
Now, prayers of the saints. Fire from God's altar. The trumpet sound. The things that happen when all of those things occur is thunder. So it's very important that you don't look for a true child of God's trouble. Because when God wants to avenge, that's what the Bible says, avenge, do not avenge yourself because vengeance belongs to God. If God decides to avenge, you keep crying to him to avenge you and he avenge. Don't go and fight the person yourself. No, report the person to God and watch God do his own part. So who are the saints? Who are the saints? Who are the ones that will be left behind? Who are the saints that the devil will have? A say over that will be able to prevail over them. That is going to deal with them. Now, we all know that our God is such a wonderful God. He cannot allow his children to suffer. He says, the Lord is angry with the wicked every day. But his children, he watches over us. So will we, genuine children of God, be among the people that will go through all of these things? Let's go to the book of Joel chapter 8. Joel chapter 8. Joel chapter 8, we're going to be reading from verse 28. Joel chapter 8. And I'm sure you've got your pen and your paper, you know. In things like this, very, very important to write it down. And then you also, you look at it. So you are able to be enlightened, you know. People don't, don't just come and be deceiving you. Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2 rather, we're going to be reading from verse 28 to 32. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit. The Lord will, you know what it means to pour, when you pour water on somebody. The Lord will pour out the Holy Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall pro pro prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I want us to focus on this B part. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. <laughs> the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. With all of these things, the Lord is telling us that where you can find safety is when you call upon his name and then in mount zion and in jerusalem in mount zion and in jerusalem where is mount zion so deliverance will be on mount zion and in jerusalem in the book of obadiah says on mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and jacob shall possess his possession <laughs> so where is mount zion where is jerusalem are we talking about physical Mount Zion or are we talking about spiritual Mount Zion? Are we talking about physical Jerusalem or spiritual Jerusalem? All of these things the Lord is going to teach us today. Mount Zion. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to be reading from verse, from verse 18 to 23. 18 to 23. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 18 to 23. For we are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that born with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of wars, which voice they had heard, entreated, that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. This Bible passage is talking about when the Israelites had an encounter with the Lord Almighty. When the Lord told them, sanctify yourself, I want to talk to you. That the presence of God was so mighty that they couldn't. Verse 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem and an innumerable company of assembly to the general assembly and the church 
of the firstborn to the general assembly. I want us to know that. And the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect. He says, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn in the heavenly Jerusalem, in the heavenly Mount Zion, not Mount Zion, not Z-I-O-N. That is where the Israelites met Jehovah. We're talking about the heavenly one right now. Remember that that's what the Lord said, that you will receive safety. Despite all the things that will be going on with those that will be remnant. Now, who is the firstborn? Who is the firstborn? Who, who, because he says the church of the firstborn. I want you to highlight that in your Bible passage. The church of the firstborn. Who is the firstborn? Let's quickly go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Colossians chapter 1. Let's read verse 17. Colossians chapter 1 verse 17 says, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Who is the firstborn? Let's go to uh, Psalms 89. Psalms 89 verse 27. Obviously we know who the firstborn is, but you know sometimes it's good to read it so that you are able to know. Firstborn is somebody that is the first in everything. Uh -huh. Psalms 89 verse 27. Psalms 89 verse 27. Psalms 89 verse 27. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 27 says, Also I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. The firstborn is Jesus Christ. Now, the question is, who is the church? The Bible person we read now, it said, the firstborn of the church. Let's go to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Remember we said the firstborn of the church. Romans chapter 15. We're going to read from verse 8 to 11. Romans chapter 15 from verse 8 to 11. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he said, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and land all ye people. Now, what did Jesus Christ come to do on the surface of the earth? Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God. To confirm the promises made unto the fathers. My brother, my sister, Jesus Christ came to confirm the promises made to Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. As you know that the Israelites, they were so religious that everything has to do with Father Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. That is it. Because that is what they, they, they that's their history. So their promises has to be based on those three patriarchs. You, you, it cannot be separated. So what did Jesus Christ come to do? He came to confirm the promises made to them. And what are the promises? You, you can write this down. Uh, Deuteronomy 30 verse 1. Then verse 4 to 5a. Jeremiah 31 verse 33. The Lord said he's going to give them the whole earth. That they saw their possession. You, we all know the story which we're going to look into gradually as the time goes. So. The Lord Almighty, Jesus, if you read the Bible, when Jesus Christ was on the surface of the earth, the repetition the Lord Almighty says all the time, repent, when John the Baptist came, say, repent for the kingdom of God has come. Jesus Christ, repent, the kingdom is here with you. So it was the promises that the, the, the old prophet, the prophet had been waiting for. That's why when Jesus Christ was taken to the temple as a son of man, there was a man that had been waiting, a woman that had been waiting in the temple. And then she saw that day, including a prophet also, because they had been waiting for the Messiah. So Jesus Christ was so angry with them that this is the Messiah that you've been waiting for, but they couldn't understand. Because why? There's a mystery. They just couldn't understand. Now, let's now go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. So remember that we're looking at the firstborn of the church. Who is the church? Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verse 24 says, let's start from verse 23. Colossians 1 verse 23. 
He says, if we continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Wherefore I, Paul, I am made a minister. Who now rejoice in my suffering for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church. You see this Bible passage, the body of Christ has not been mentioned anywhere else, except in this Bible passage. Is not this church had not been mentioned anywhere except Apostle Apostle Paul was the one the Lord inspired to say it. So Apostle Paul said, I am suffering. He suffered, that man, he suffered. He, he suffered. Let's not even go there. He, they, they dealt with him. Paul was hated by the, both the Jews, even the Gentiles, they abused him. The Greek, all of them, because of the church. Is a minister of the church. Hmm. So let's now go to, let's read further. Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. I want us to focus on that verse 26 and 27. If even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generation. But now is made manifest to his saints. Hold on, please. Let's hold on there. A mystery. <laughs> Hid from ages. From generation. Oh, Lord. But now is made manifest to his saints. When the Lord will lead Apostle Paul on his way to go and persecute the children of God. After that encounter, when the Lord opened his eyes, the Lord told him not to go to Jerusalem. He went into the wilderness for three years to learn a lot of things. How do I know? You will know that there are certain revelations that Apostle Paul knew. That he wasn't, the first one is communion. That's a mystery. He wasn't with the, with the disciples when they had communion with Jesus Christ before he died. But he told them, he said, what I have received from the Lord, I also give to you. First Corinthians. So he had communion with God. So for that three years that he was with Jesus Christ, the mystery was revealed to him. And what is that mystery? But now is made manifest to his saint, to whom God will make known what is riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. You know what is mean Christ in you? That's why the Bible says two shall become one. The husband and the wife will become one. So literally speaking, the wife is living in the husband. The husband is living in the wife. And we studied it in the book of Genesis. When the Lord created Adam, Eve was in him. When it was time to bring out Eve, the Lord just took it. You know, if you look at the meaning of rip in Hebrew language, it means Tesla, which is side. So the Lord just removed Eve from the side of Adam. That's where the covenant now came down. A man shall leave his wife and cling to her. So when you say the body of Christ, Christ in me, the hope of glory, you are living in Christ and Christ is living in you. That is the, that is the mystery. Mystery that come think of it. What are you talking about? The Israelites were the same people that Jehovah told and said, when you see the Gentiles, what should you do? Destroy. I have given you the necks of your enemies. Destroy. Well, you know what? Our God is a sovereign God. That is why Apostle Peter could not understand why Cornelius should be saved. Why would he be saved? The, when, when Cornelius went to meet, when Peter went to meet Cornelius, the first thing Peter told him, he said, you know, I'm not meant to be here with you. You are unclean. Because that has been the mindset and that's what Jehovah told them. But there was a mystery. Our God is mysterious. He loves all his creation. Now, so it's not everything God reveals to us, his children. So the ones that he reveals, Deuteronomy 29 verse 29, it says the secret of the Lord belongs to the Lord. And to his children, the one he reveals, thank God for that. So when the Lord reveals things to you, don't take it for granted because he can decide not to. Now let's quickly go back to the book of. So we can see now, my brother, my sisters, that's the mystery of the body of Christ. I'm sure you're getting it now. Is in question mark. We're going to read further. So you should be able to answer even before I say it. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28. 
The Bible says, it says, Beside those things that are without, that which cometh up to me daily, the care of all the churches. That was Apostle Paul's mission. That was what the Lord sent him to do. The church. Acts chapter 3. Let's quickly go to the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says. Uh, let, let's read from verse. Let's look at. Repent ye therefore. Okay, because of, because I don't want us to look at, okay, yes, okay. Now, that's it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, before we go into that Bible passage, we're going to look at the preaching of Apostle Peter. Remember that when Jesus Christ arose, what happened? He, he, he visited the disciples. He stayed with them for 40 days. And then he told them to wait in the upper room. Now, when the days of Pentecost came, Apostle Peter and the other people that were in the upper room, they were speaking in all the tongues. Now, let's look at the preaching of Apostle Paul. Remember that when Jesus Christ was on the surface of the earth, the Lord told them they should not go to the Gentiles. They should go only to the Jews. Now, let us look at what Apostle... Let's look at the preaching of Apostle Peter. This is his pre preacher. Repent ye therefore and be converted... That your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you. Wait a minute. Repent ye therefore. And be converted. What was the preaching of Jesus Christ? Repent. What was the preaching of John the Baptist? Repent for the kingdom of God is here. Jesus Christ said the kingdom is here with you. I want us to know that. Verse 20. Apostle Peter said. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which was before, was preached unto you. We're going to jump to verse 20, 26. He now says, Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Who was Apostle Paul talking to? The Jews. There was no Gentiles there. You know, because the Babylons, the, when the Babylonians invaded um, Jerusalem, all the Jews scattered. So what happened? They've already established themselves in different countries. So they had to come together. They had to travel around to come for the Passover. So that's why they were all in the same place. And that was when the Lord moved. So the Chinese that came from China, the Indian that came, that was a Jew that came all the way to, the, to Jerusalem. What happened? They started hearing Indian. They started hearing oh, oh, oh. all the ones that speak Chinese. All of them were hearing that. And these people, we know them. How come they are speaking my language? So now Apostle Peter was able to preach to them, to tell them the Genesis, that they were not drunk people. It wasn't that they were drunk. But they were talking to the Jews. There was no Gentile there. No Gentile there. Now let's now go to Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Acts chapter 2 verse 30. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, the preaching of Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized everyone in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39 says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, only to the Jews. Now, let's now look at Apostle Paul's preaching. Please note it. The preaching of Apostle Peter is repent, repent, repent. Let's go to the preaching of Apostle, Pete, Apostle Paul. Romans chapter 16 verse 24. Romans chapter 16 verse 24. Romans chapter 16 verse 24. It says, let's start from verse, no, let's not read that. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let's go to Romans 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. 15, yeah. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 2. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Verse 3, this was his simple message. 
no controversy. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Simple. That is the, there's no, uh, there's no, there's no controversy about it. Once you have faith and believe that Jesus Christ died, he rose again, and is the soon coming king, that's all. With faith. Faith. That is his preacher. He received it because the Lord told him. He wasn't there. He received it when they, when they had communion, he wasn't there. But the Lord told him, when he said, who am I going? When the Lord encountered, he said, why do you persecute me? Who say, who? He said, who? The Lord now introduced himself to him. That This is me that you are crucifying. Now, Christ in you. There is no way you can be Christ in you in the physical. It's a spiritual thing. Let's go to Colossians. Let's go back to that Colossians chapter 1. Oh, God is so great. So we need to understand the body. Remember that what the word, what the word of God is teaching us now is the body of the, the, the where we'll get the testimony in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem. Who are the Mount Zion? The body of Christ. Those are the ones. In the heavenly Mount Zion. Mount, not Zion, not Z I O N, but S I O N. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1 verse 26 to 29 26 to 29 so it says to whom god will make let's start from verse 27 because we've read it to whom god would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the gentiles which is christ in you the hope of glory whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in christ jesus wherefore i also labor striving according to his working which worketh in me mightily so we now understand that the body of christ if you also go to the book of look at i want us to read a particular bible passage here before we read further let's go to first corinthians first corinthians chapter 3 first corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 to 10 first corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 to 10 he says for we are laborers together with god ye are god's boundary ye are god's building According to the grace of God, which is given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Ah, the cornerstone that was rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. And another builder did, but let every man take heed how he be that thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay, that is, which is Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul is so confident that what the Lord told him to say is the foundation. Jesus Christ died. He rose again, believe. That's all. No complication about it. So, the foundation which is laid by Jesus and the finished work of the cross, that is it. So, the body of Christ is the former Gentile. They are the former pagans. The former people that the Israelite, the Lord said, destroy. Don't leave any of them. If you leave them, they will become a thorn. Those are the people. And that is because it's a mystery. From the beginning, the Lord the Lord wanted to save the Gentiles. But he didn't reveal it. When the time came, the Lord revealed it to Apostle Paul. Why Apostle Paul? Because Peter was not ready. If you read the Bible passage very well, in fact, that's another mystery. But if you read where the, the Israelites were totally abandoned, when the Lord told Apostle Peter to go to Cornelius, he said, no, I cannot eat anything unclean, number one. When they stoned Stephen, when they stoned Stephen, Stephen was repeating the same thing. The people did not want to hear. Jesus Christ arose and said, you know, when Christ arises, earthquake moves, mighty things happen. So when the Lord arose, the earthquake and the thunderings that came, the Israelites could not hear. You know what they said? They, they couldn't, they blocked their ears. What were they blocking their ears from? From the thunder, from the, you know, when, when they say when a dog wants to, when, when a dog wants to be killed, he will not hear the whistle of the owner. That there is danger, there is danger. The, the dog will keep going. Then they stoned Stephen. That was the, the end. Then the Lord said, you know what? Let me go and look for Apostle Paul. Whom the Lord had ordained. You see, our God is a mystery. He is a mystery. You can never. 
So somebody that says that they, they don't, they don't, there is no God. You're a fool. The Bible says it. A fool says there is no God. The person is a big fool. Not even just big. Your own is another level. So is the Bible that says, I'm not calling you a fool. The Bible says, a fool says there is no God. So the body of Christ is the former Gentiles. The pagans that Jehovah told the Israelites to destroy on the way from Egypt. This is a mystery. And is in Christ, is true Holy Spirit that helps us to get into the body. So, personally, I'm a body of Christ. You know, Gentiles, they were all pagan worship. My, where I come from, their history is pagan. But through the work of the Holy Spirit and with the with the work of the cross, with the Lord Almighty, I'm, I'm part of the body of Christ. Now, my brother and my sister, what about Jerusalem? <laughs> what about Jerusalem? If you go to the book of Genesis chapter 15, verse 18 to 21. Let's quickly read it. Genesis chapter 15, verse 18 to 21. We're, get, we're getting somewhere. The Holy Spirit is teaching us something. And I'm sure you learning. Genesis chapter 15 from verse 18 to 21. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying unto thy seed, Have I given unto this land? From the river of Egypt unto the great river, the, the river Ephrath, the Canaanites, the Genizites, and the Cadmonites, and the Hittites, and the Perusites, and the Riphites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Gigashites, and the Jebusites, including the Middle East. What is happening in Jerusalem? And Palestinian is in the Bible. The Lord Almighty has given all to Abraham. That's why Jerusalem will never agree. Israel will never agree that the Palestinians should take it. But something is going to happen. The Jews, as we all know, they always require a sign. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22 says, for, let's start from verse uh, 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the word by wisdom, knew not God, he pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believed. Believed, that's all. Faith. Faith, believe. Once you believe, you come into the body of Christ. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Greeks are not after signs. They, they are very intelligent people. What they want to know is, where is it? How? They begin to question you. That's why the Bible says the Lord turned their wisdom to foolishness. They cannot understand. If you want to search God and you want to be wise and say, I want to, the Lord can make the person foolish because he's the one that gave the wisdom. But the Jews, they always require a sign. When King, when prophet Moses had an encounter with Jesus Christ, I am that I am, he asked him, he said, whom should I say sent me? Why? Because he knows the he knows his people. He knows these people, they, they grew up with the, they, they, they have the mindset and they are under the leadership of the Egyptians. And the Egyptians gods, they have a name. So he knows his people that they will ask that, who sent you? What is the name? Because we know the name of the God of these Egyptians. We know this is his name. Then the Lord said, I am that I am. Then, the, because the, the, he knows the type of people they are. The Lord now told him, he said, that rod in your hand, put it down. Let me tell you, first of all, the sign. He showed it to Moses, which built up the confidence of Moses that, ah, this rod can change into serpent. And we know that throughout the time that Egypt, Israel, the Israelites were with Father Moses, all the way from the time they left Egypt to the time they got to the promised land, the Lord had to show them signs. Water came out from rock. Everything. The sea parted. They will not believe without sign. That's why they asked Jesus Christ. In the book of John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, they said, Jesus, show us a sign before we believe that you are the Messiah. Jesus Christ said, I will not show you no sign. The only sign you must notice is Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days. After three days, the Lord was trying to tell them about his death and resurrection. Still, they didn't understand. So, remember that Jesus Christ was talking, was, was talking to the Jews. Now, let's quickly go to... So, Jesus Christ refused to answer them when they asked for a sign. The Jews always ask for a sign. Now, let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14... Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, from verse 1 to 3. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. I go prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive unto myself that where I am, there ye may also be. The Lord was talking about his second coming. Let's now go to... Jesus was talking to the two of who represent Israel. He was talking about his second coming. Let's now go to Zechariah chapter 14. That is the second to the last chapter of the book of, of the Old Testament. The last chapter of the book of, of the Old Testament is Malachi. Now one, one should not forget that. Zechariah, Zechariah chapter, uh, let's read Zechariah chapter 14. We're going to read from verse 1 to 2. Zechariah 14 verse 1 to 2. Zechariah 14 verse 1 to 2. It says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem. Mm -mm. <laughs> I will gather all nations against Jerusalem, Armageddon, the battle of the Armageddon, to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses riffled, and the women ravished, raped, and all of those things, and out of, out, out of, out, half of the city shall go into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord Go forth and fight against those nations. Everybody is against Israel. There was one time Turkey was even with them. Now every nation is against Israel. Except America. And so on. So you see, after some time, even when the trumpet sound, America will go against Israel. I will not be here by God's grace. So, but but the, you, the people that will be left behind will listen to this teaching. The Lord told me, he said, a day is coming. This is your teaching that you are looking at it. That, oh, he said, millions will watch it, but the trumpet will have sounded, will have gone back. <laughs> will have gone to reign with Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Oh, amen. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Jerusalem shall be taken. They will be invaded. Then what happened? The Lord will deliver them. Then shall the, the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Now let's go to verse 4. And his feet shall stand in the day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. <laughs> and in the Mount of Olives shall cleave, cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove to, towards the north, and half of it towards the south. Our focus is the A part. And his feet shall stand in the day. There is no way somebody's feet in the physical can stand in the cloud. He's talking about the resurrected body of Jesus. Clouds don't have feet. Jesus Christ. Remember, if you go to the book of Revelation, it talks about the feet of Jesus Christ on the ground. It's not in the resurrected body of Jesus. So the resurrected body is the one that the Lord was talking about. He said, and his feet shall stand in the day upon the Mount of Olives. That was the same thing the Lord was telling the Jews, Peter and, and the other brethren in the book of Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 1. Please hold on to that, Zechariah. Don't close that Bible passage. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Let's go to verse 11. Acts chapter 1 verse 11. It says, well, let's start from verse 1. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sights. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by him in white uproar, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come like this manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. That was the same thing the disciple, the Lord Almighty was telling the, 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 this was the same thing the Lord was telling them, that as you see Jesus like that, as you are looking at him, He's going to return the same way according to the Bible, Bible we just read in the book of Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4. Where is he going to? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. That's where his feet is going to be. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19 from verse 27 to 28. 27 to 28. Then, Peter, then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we are forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily, 
I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 4. Revelation chapter 7 verse 4. When Apostle Peter asked and said, excuse me, we are doing all of this. What is my, what is my testimony? Revelation chapter 7 verse 4 says, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed an hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So if somebody comes to tell you, I say, I'm one of the hundred and forty-four thousand, tell the person you are not. It is reserved for the Jews. It's in the Bible. I am the body of the Christ. I don't know about you. But nobody, don't let it come and tell you that I'm, I'm part of the 144,000. No. Certain things needs to follow. And it's reserved for the tribes of Israel. There are a lot of Jews that they don't even know which tribe they belong to. Time will tell. So, let's now go back to that Zechariah chapter 13. So, we are able to understand now the Jerusalem the Lord is talking about is the Jews. The Lord Almighty will come back in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Physical Jerusalem. Let's go to Zechariah 13. We're coming to a conclusion now. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 9. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 9 says, I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. Let's go back to the book of Revelation. Let's go back to the book of Revelation. So out of all, there are still some people. One third. Let's go to Revelation chapter 7 from verse, um, verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And where came them? And I said unto them, Sir, thou hast known. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. And washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So, one third will survive. They will go through the testing of the tribulation. After the death of, the, the, of Stephen, the disciples never left Jerusalem. Acts chapter 8 verse 1. The Jews. Apostle Paul emerged. The Jews have the gospel of the kingdom based on messiahship under the law with the temple operating and the gospel is repent for the kingdom. He said, repent, repent. After the rapture, there are certain things that will take place with the physical Jerusalem, with the physical Israel. Now, for now, Jerusalem is blind. Let's go to Romans chapter 11 verse 7. Romans chapter 11 verse 7. Romans 11 verse 7 says, What then? Israel has not obtained that which is seeketh for. But the election had obtained it. The election, the body of Christ has ob obtained it. And the rest were blinded. So they are blind now. Let's now go to 25 to 26. 25 to 26 says, For I will not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own concept, that blindness is, is in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be coming, and all Israel shall be saved as it is written. Then shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away the ungodliness from Jacob. Fullness of the Gentiles, the body of Christ, all the people that are not Jews, they must hear about Jesus Christ. They will come together. The rapture, if you go to the Bible, it was only Apostle Peter that talked about the rapture. No other person. He was the only person. It is when the body of Christ is filled. Remember, he was the minister of the Gentiles. He's the minister of the body of Christ. He's the one that laid the foundation. So when the body is in full, the Gentiles, all the Gentiles that are not Jews, come together, the rapture will take place. And when the rapture takes place, there will be tribulation where the Israelites will be on earth. So the Gentiles are the ones that will be taken unto rapture. Somebody might say, ah, what are you talking about? We just read everything. So the rapture 
according to the teaching of Apostle Paul, who laid the foundation, was the only one that talked about rapture. No, no, no other, no other person talked about it except the minister of the body of Christ. So then the tribulation will occur. So the the body of Christ will be taken. When the trumpet sound, the body of Christ will be taken to go and reign with Christ for a certain period. Then the tribulation will happen. The cries of the gentle or the cries of the Jews that will be left behind will bring forth the next seven trumpets that will sound. So my brother, my sisters, out of all of those things, 144,000 will survive. 144,000 will survive and pass through the tribulation successfully. After the rapture, when the body of Christ has been taken, the Antichrist will help to rebuild the temple. Really? Yes. And that will be our topic for the next time we meet. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Help us, Lord, to finish this race well. Begin to say, Father, please give me the grace that when you return, I'll be among the body. I don't want to be separated, Lord. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to finish this race. In Jesus' name, amen. For that, my sister, my brother, that you're not yet a child of God, it's time for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. It is time. It's very simple. Jesus Christ died. It is unto the mouth you confess. That's all. And you believe with your heart. Once you have faith, you confess. You are saved. No controversy. No complication. We don't need to go to any temple to fulfill righteousness. Even when Apostle Peter, all of them were saved, they were still following the, the protocol. He went to the temple to pray. That's where he saw the man that was lame at the beautiful gate. But we, we don't need to go through all of those things. The Lord Almighty has saved us. So what do you do? You say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. I renounce you, Satan, and your works. The grace to finish the race will let it rest upon me in the name of Jesus. And I will pray with you. Father Lord, I thank you. I give you glory. Give you honor. Give you adoration. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Holy Spirit, for all your children that have given their life to you. Father, please, the sustaining grace to finish well, let it rest upon each one of us. Anything that wants to take them away from you, Father, please take it away from them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now that you're a child of God, make sure you don't despise the brethren, the gathering of the brethren. Read the word of God and walk with the Holy Spirit and the Lord will help each one of us in the name of Jesus. The Lord be with you, shine his face upon you. So the next time we're going to be meeting, we're going to be talking about the physical temple which I relate with the Antichrist. What's going to happen? So it's been established now that on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be safety and those that call upon the name of the Lord shall 